So you mentioned Van Meter earlier. So he goes 4601 in 80. You go 4590. That's a tenth of a second in one year. Would you have ever believed that nobody would come along for nine years to break that 100 freestyle record, that that 100 free record would stand the way it did? I mean, because you were really swimming extremely close to your contemporaries, it probably speaks to how good John Van Meter was, you know, and you were. Um, but, you know, take me back inside that 100 free because there is a very short list of state records that have stood eight plus years in the state, and yours did. And I, I'd love to hear everything you can tell me about that particular race. Well, the 100 um, for me was probably the most enjoyable race that I swam. I think. Um, I always considered myself a better 200 freestyler and then I was in retrospect I'm, I must have been a better 100 freestyler because the record stood longer. I mean the 200 record only lasted a year. Um, but when I swam the 100 it was a joy to swim because I could just sprint the thing and it hurt but I never really got into that kind of pain level you get in a 200. Um, but I knew I wanted to go 45. I had been 46 at my conference meet, I think 46, five or four or something. So I knew that I could, I could go 45 uh, if I tapered some more and put it together. Um, and uh, the, the, the meet was held at the old Matt Man pool at U of M which was nice for us because it was our hometown pool in Ann Arbor. But on the other hand, it wasn't so great, I think, for us, for swimming for times because it was really a wavy pool. It was a very tight pool. Um, and they're, they're, they just created, it created a lot of waves. I, I felt like Michigan State's pool was a little faster. Um, but, you know, I was, I, the 100 for me, both in the prelims and the finals, was, a, was kind of a treat because I had already swum the 200 and I'd already gone fast in the 200 and was, you know, relatively happy with my time. Um, luckily in the 100, uh, I, kind, I felt confident that I could win it. So it was really just about trying to swim fast. And the, uh, in the prelims, I went 45.9 and got to that 45 point and felt great about that. In the finals, I went 46. Um, and I was, I was probably just a little gas from everything. Um, uh, but I was, I was happy to be 45. You know, I remember thinking uh, that two years before that, if anyone had ever said that I could go 45-9, I would have laughed. I just would have laughed. I, I would have thought, you're insane. There's no way that me or anyone else is going to go 45 in a couple of years. Um, and uh, the fact that it lasted, the record lasted that long was also a surprise to me. Um, I remember coming back two years later to watch the state meet, to watch some of my friends swim at the state meeting. It was at Michigan State. And I think the winner in the 100 in 1983, if it was 1983, went uh, like a 48 flat. And I just remember thinking, oh, wow. Wow, that record might be around for a while. I don't know, you know? I mean, like we talked about when we were talking with Dan, I, I always think that records are meant to be broken. And I think it's really great that records are out there in our sport because it gives something for everyone to shoot by, shoot towards, and it also gives uh, historical perspective um, so that you know you can compare and and um, and so there's no doubt that um, the kids who are swimming today are much faster than I was, you know. Whereas if you maybe were a basketball player or a football player. You might be able to say 35 years later, 
I think I'm as good or as fast as these players that I'm watching. It's Will really Chamberlain cool. could probably play in the NBA today. Right. Michael so or Mark Spitz could not swim in the Olympics today. Exactly. And so in swimming, you know, it's like, it's a really good way for you to, um, you know, kind of say goodbye to your youth and embrace the, how well the kids are swimming these days and really appreciate how fast they are. 